Hey, I'm Alex. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO here at Snorkel AI. I'm also back at the University of Washington in the CS department, and I'm super privileged today to be joined by Ryan. Ryan, do you want to give a, a quick intro? Yeah. Hey, I'm Ryan Smith. I'm one of the research engineers here at Snorkel. Awesome. Well, lots of cool work going on in your neck of the woods. Obviously, I'm a little biased, but I think objectively, it's a very defensible statement. Today, just we have a few minutes, so I'll focus on one paper that you and the team recently posted called language models in the loop, incorporating prompting into, into weak supervision. And I think, you know, at a high level, it's a pretty cool example of using foundation models to train other models, to label data, train other models, rather than directly trying to plug them into production, which is, we can talk more about the motivations, but a pretty, pretty interesting new line of work that, that you all posted back in April or May. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, about motivation? And, uh, and some of what you did in the paper. Yeah, so that was a really cool experience. Right before we started work on that, I gave an ML whiteboard here that's on YouTube. I think you can find it, but it's basically just like kind of going over some prompting methods. And at the end of it, there was a little cutaway segment of, okay, and then here's, you know, in the future, we could put this into weak, weak supervision pipeline. And as these zero and few shot methods get more robust, here's where we think they'll end up. Right after that, we had a talk with some of the research scientists at Snorkel, and we decided to run some experiments. It started as kind of just saying, okay, let's use a few zero and few shot methods as labeling functions in a weak supervision pipeline just to see, will this boost our performance? Is there a signal to be gotten from here? What it ended up turning into was we actually ended up using the same model, T0++ model out of big science. And we were able to ask it a bunch of different questions with complementary domain knowledge. And then each of those questions actually ended up boosting performance in a really cool way in that we ended with a model that I can go into the specifics in a bit, but basically we ended up with a model that was better if, than if you had just like coded in these kind of rule-based decisions yourself. And so you asked about the motivations there. The motivation behind it is, I would say there's a few different reasons, but two prominent ones in my mind. One is that in your typical zero or few shot setting, you're not really able to adapt those models that you train to either subsets of your data or edge cases that you find as your models in production. And so when you put, when you instead put those models into a weak supervision pipeline, it gives you a lot more, I would say, flexibility to still get the good parts of those models. So where they do well, they still do well, but also not be glued to kind of the failure modes that they have in that you can have the, where the model does poorly, you can write other labeling functions to cover your tracks and then adapt from there. And then the other big point, which if you've read any snorkel marketing content over the last few months, you'll definitely be aware of this, but this allows you to train a much smaller model in production, which I think is a huge win for everyone and cut down your deployment costs. Man, you're, you're rooting all my, my leading questions that I was <laughs> planning around that. Uh, I'm gonna plow on nonetheless and just take a step back because there's a lot of awesome stuff to unpack there, but I'll start backwards with, with starting with the motivation, right? So you mentioned number one, this idea of being able to kind of correct and refine and adapt these, these foundation models and beyond just zero shot or push button methods. And then second, the ability to actually, rather than trying to deploy them directly and, and correct me if I'm saying this wrong, but rather than deploying them directly, which many organizations, most organizations actually that we work with can't do you're using them to supervise smaller deployable kind of specialist models. Is that a fair kind of a breakdown of the motivations? Absolutely. Yeah. The, especially on the deployment point, I think that in, in my experience, at least you're, when you're in deployment, you're seeing, you know, orders of magnitude, more data. And so that's where your main inference cost is going to be. And so applying these models to like even large data sets is still just like a drop in the bucket of how much you would end up spending if you serve that in production. Yeah, and and governance and other constraints as well. I mean, a lot of a lot of folks I know that we we are motivated by you know, can't can't just deploy GPT three or GPT four to production for frankly you know good reasons around you know cost and 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 inference time, but also just our ability to put kind of governance constraints around them and understand what's going on and what we can guarantee. So I, I really like this idea of, of again very biased, but really really a big fan of this this line of work that that you and team started around trying to use foundation models to supervisor to you know to train smaller deployable models kind of specialist models rather than trying to deploy them dire directly and then having this idea let's maybe unpack that second idea that rather than just kind of a push button zero shot approach you're asking multiple questions or prompts of the foundation model 
which allows you to kind of tune or narrow or refine what is actually coming out of it using your domain knowledge. So maybe to unpack that, maybe you can walk us through an example of what that would actually look like in, in, in a real application. Yeah. And so this was something that I think was kind of a surprise, maybe not surprise, but definitely something that we weren't really planning to go in this direction at first. And then it was just so promising once we got started with it. But so to like go down to a lower level view. So imagine that you're trying to classify one of the data sets that we use in the paper, YouTube comments as either spam or not spam. And so you could like just straight up ask the model, okay, is this comment spam? And the model will give you an answer, you know, depending on how well it knows what the spam token actually refers to, how much it picks up from the comment itself, and, you know, all that. What you could do instead is you could ask some leading questions, kind of like in the way of weak supervision, where I, as a human with knowledge about what spam comments are likely to include, could say something like, is this comment asking me to take an action, like click a link or, you know, subscribe or something like that. And then the model might interpret taking an action as like, you know, totally uncorrelated with spam, but now we're able to make that connection ourselves instead of kind of relying on the weights of the neural network to have that already coded in. So you can ask a few different questions that are all, you know, related to spam. Like, does this ask me to take an action? Does this ask me to, I think it was like, listen to a song or something about, does this comment express a strong sentiment would be leading it to be not spam. So you kind of like start encoding your domain knowledge that way, which ended up being really cool. And as I alluded to, there were a bunch of kind of like hard-coded rules that we were, you know, mirroring for this domain knowledge. Wrench is a great open source resource that I know Alex, one of your students, was the one that developed it. And it has a benchmark of all these weak supervision tasks with hard-coded LF rules in there. And so we actually just took those hard-coded LF rules, converted them to prompts for the model, and the resulting NMOL actually ended up doing better in two out of three cases, which was really cool to see. That's, that's super cool. And brief plug before we move to wrap up, but Ryan will be speaking at the, uh, I think the in-person event, the live in-person event of the hybrid virtual summit around foundation models and data-centric AI that we're holding on Jan 17 with a, a bunch of great folks speaking. So please, you know, come if you want to learn more about this awesome work. I think maybe just to, just to kind of wrap it, it's pretty, pretty cool. So, you know, kind of what you're saying is, or what this, you know, the work is, is showing is that by, you know, using your domain expertise to, to, to make multiple targeted prompts or questions of these foundation models and then combining them in smart ways using weak supervision, you can actually get better results in smaller, more deployable models than if you just kind of did the push button approach of using a foundation model. And that's, that's super cool. I mean, actually a couple of, we just did a couple of these other little, you know, little mini discussions right before this. And actually there's a, there's a kind of common theme unsurprisingly amongst some of the, the group here we talked to Mei Chen, who had talked about kind of one way of fusing embeddings from foundation models with these kind of brittle rules or heuristics from domain experts. We talked with, with Simran about the AMA paper from, from the Stanford lab about, you know, combining multiple different prompts via weak supervision. And, yeah. you know, this is really the, you know, the, the uh, um, all, all those ideas and, and, and yours here really come down to this idea of how do we combine these big foundation models with domain expert knowledge that can kind of get more out of them. And in, in, in the case of your work, how do you then also get into a deployable format, a smaller model that you can actually ship in an enterprise setting? So super, super cool stuff. If you're interested for those still tuned in and, and learning more, you know, please, please check out Ryan's talk at the event. Yeah.